How you doing, YouTube? Matt, Massive Beer Reviews, back with yet another review. A little bit of mystery beers uh, in the form of, I have no idea what's what. All I know, paper, tape, mystery beer, we're going to do it. Let's just crack into it. Talk about it as we go along. Mystery beers, what are they? They are beers that people send me. Um, I open them, I pour them, um, and then I talk about the beer, I guess, about what it is and what kind of beer I think it is, what's in it. All the bits and pieces that go along with that. And then sometimes I actually guess the beer itself. It's few and far between. But uh, yeah, that's what I do. Uh, people out there send them to me. That's the only way I can do these. This one comes courtesy of Steven. Thank you very much, brother. And uh, what do we have here? You know, just under a pinky finger. Start off with kind of rocky head on it. And she's got a kind of fruit beer kind of sour component to her. Just a murky kind of raspberry seed kind of color to it with a little bit of kind of cataracty edges on it so from a distance actually it looks like kind of like a sour ipa or a fruit beer something of that sense so yeah let's get a nose on her okay it doesn't really come off all that sour or anything like that there's a little bit of fruit in there but it's mostly hop driven so it definitely comes off as somebody's version of an ipa maybe or hop forward beer i would go more hop forward beer as opposed to ipa yeah, there's definitely a big citrus component to the hop, a little bit of kind of rindy fruitiness to it. But then there's something else. There's a fruit beyond the hop in there, like an added component. That would kind of make sense the way the beer kind of looks, a little bit more reddish, a little darker than your typical kind of IPA. So, yeah, from uh, just even from a distance or even a nose, it smells like a fruit-added hop-forward beer. I'm not going to go as far as to call it an IPA just yet. Let's dive in. Cheers. Hmm. 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 Um, pretty much exactly what I said based off the look and, well, be more based off the nose. It's like somebody's kind of fruit beer with a hop forwardness to it. It's not sour. There's a subtle tartness underlying, but there's no sourness to it. So I think that tartness is from a fruit addition. There's really not much, if any, kind of lactose in there. So I'd kind of go, it almost comes off as somebody's version of either a fruited a sour IPA that's not all that sour, or somebody's version of a milkshake IPA that doesn't necessarily get in that milkshake realm Yeah. It's it's somebody's hop forward fruited pale. That's as far as I'm gonna go with it. Um, probably looking right around five to six percent alcohol by volume. Somebody's fruited pale. That's it. Now as far as the fruit goes, generic berry is pretty much all I'm getting in it. It's just soft berry that doesn't really bring a much to the table. It's like a generic kind of fruit component to it, but there has to be something beyond the hops in there. So yeah. A five, six percent kind of pale ale with some sort of fruit addition that doesn't shine too crazily on the beer, but adds a little extra depth to the fruit component you're getting from the hops. Done and done. I feel like I did a really bad job on this one. I actually haven't done a beer review in a while. Um, just kind of felt like popping one off real quick, so might be a little bit off my game. So let's see where the sucker comes. I can't detect what the beer is yet from just that little peak of what's showing through there. Can we just rip this down here? Um, okay. Ah, it is an industrial arts beer. Um, it is collaboration, I think. Oh, wow. This is uh, a collaboration with Two Roads, actually. And it's their New England style IPA brewed with hibiscus. That's what it was. See, that's where that subtle kind of fruit thing, it didn't really lend like a fruit flavor, but there was an added component to it. Hibiscus. I would have never gotten that, so I'm not going to act like, oh my God, I, I should have gotten that. Um, it's 6.4%. Yeah, man, it doesn't really come off as a New England style IPA. It looks the part, um, but it doesn't really come off all that crazy, um, like hazy. It's not like wrenchy as far as New England IPAs go. It says before industrial arts became uh, before industrial arts came two roads, but even before there was oh there was always Phil Markowski. They're talking about who made the brewing of elegant beer seem easy. It's not. Um, it's an honor to cook up this vivid explosion of 
color and flavor with someone from whom we've drawn so much inspiration from over the years. So now with a with a bloomerang, it has come back around. Cheers, Phil. Yeah, bloomerang. So it, it, it tastes honestly makes a little bit more sense there. It's very reserved, very not over the top. It's very very Phil. Um, uh, and how he does things. It almost like it has a kind of Saison based yeast as opposed to, you know, your generic kind of London 3 kind of Conan kind of thing going on for New England style IPA. And then you add that kind of hibiscus in there. And it just kind of, you know, makes sense, I guess. When you get into the core of it, it kind of makes sense. I don't think I'd ever would have gotten that hibiscus or talked about it. Um, without knowing it. So I'm not have no problems with me missing that. You know, I was right around a little bit lower. I said five to six percent to six point four percent. It doesn't come off much like a hazy New England style IPA, but it comes off as a let's say industrial arts pre wrench and Phil Markowski's version of New England style IPA with hibiscus floating around it, if it makes any sense. I have no problem with what I got off this beer. It's very soft, very subtle, very gentle, but at the same time meaningful. Which is kind of what you know Phil does. Uh, so let's talk about it. It's one of the better New England style IPAs, hibiscus or otherwise. Uh, you know, just on the outside looking in for me, but uh, at the same time, it's a tasty beer. Value and availability, uh, it's Dust Show Arts, so their price points kind of market value, and you can find their stuff on shelves and leave you with if you like what we like this beer, if you like hibiscus, and if you like New England IPAs, but you want a very, very subtle, gentle vibe to it because it does have that mouthfeel and it does have a creaminess to it, slacks that kind of. <coughs> hot punch you're usually looking for um all that being said this was packaged july um july august september october november december it's almost six months old that could lend a lot to the way the hops kind of showed on that so take that for a grain of salt didn't actually even think about looking at date on the can till now so there you go another mystery beer down hopefully you guys enjoyed it uh, down there if you want to talk about it massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff beer massive if you want to check me out doing a whole podcasting thing hopefully you guys enjoyed the review hopefully enjoying a nice little hazy right now and hopefully see you next time cheers <laughs>